everybody and good afternoon to mr shobhu thanks a lot for coming such a short notice and actually accepting i mean i didn't have to actually write a second mail i just said will you come and talk and he immediately wrote back saying yes and he apologized for being one day late and i was thinking wow so uh, thanks a lot uh, for accepting and uh, thanks also for the He is the CEO and founder of Arca Media, and one of their <coughs> productions, which all of us are in awe with, is Baba uh, Bhagwan's One and Two, both. And um, so you would be surprised to know that he actually is an engineer by education. He did his uh, civil and environmental engineering from Andhra University, and then he went and did uh, in Texas A and M agriculture engineering. So the jump from agriculture to movies is a huge one, but it also gives a lot of other books that I can also take to it. You can move from something you're doing in, say, I don't know, data sciences and move all the way to into cartoons. Uh, but it, there is a possibility because there is the passion for, move, for movies. Movies are uh, something that can make us very passionate. We can spend hours together talking about two things in India: one are movies, one is politics. politics. But we stopped talking about politics recently, so we are doing movies now. So uh, he established Arca Media Works in 2001, and uh, he also the, the studio itself produces television content in six languages. Uh, it's a technology that we are interested in as a, as an institute. Of the, how do you actually use language and speech technology when you take movies that were maybe initially produced in Marathi and take it to uh, have it redone in Telugu? And um, he also, uh, other than, of course, uh, Bahubali, uh, he's also had many other movies. And most important is the National Award for the Best Feature Film, of course, uh, the, the first part, and got nominated for the Saturn Award for Best Fantasy Film. So I think it's a fantasy that attracts us to that movie. And uh, many other awards, I will, all of, I'm, I'm just reading from Wiki page, and all of you must be doing the same. So I'm not going to uh, take any more of your time and uh, Mr. Shobu's time. Thanks a lot for coming here. And uh, please, uh, any of you have questions, uh, you can raise your hands. I'm sure he'll answer and do have questions. OK, thank you. No, this is fine. I'll do it. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, it's nice to be here, uh, as always. Uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction. <laughs> uh, yeah, today I was asked to talk about uh, the making of Bahubali more from the VFX side. And uh, apparently, there's going to be an unreal uh, workshop in the next week or so. So, as a Precursor to that, I was uh, going to talk about uh, VFX, uh, how we used it in Bahubali. And uh, also, I thought we'll probably talk a little bit about what's coming in VFX in the future, the technologies like AI and Unreal, the game engines, how they are changing the VFX game and uh, filmmaking game in general. So, yeah, so I, the topic was uh, then and now, but I changed it to now and future. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it shifted, right? Okay. I think it shifted, but uh, uh, oh, there's a power. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, broadly, um, uh, it's pre-production, production, and uh, 
uh, and post production the once you have the story it's divided into three parts pre production production and post production but i'm going to talk mostly in reference to visual effects and uh, creative side of it uh, within within uh, pre production we have uh, you know one is when we did bahubali was defining the world of bahubali uh, i'll talk about what it meant uh, then we had concept sketches then we have uh, key art and uh, storyboards and previous this was all done in the uh, pre production stage so when i when i say what is uh, world of bahubali so as you know it's a completely fictitious story and uh, once the story was written um, it, it had a certain kingdoms and certain uh, people kings man uh, and everything else but there was no reference to what these people were to look like or uh, what were they doing at the time uh, what was the socio economic state uh, this thing what was their business what was their culture uh, what were they farming what where were they making money from so uh, we uh, went ahead and developed this bible uh, a creative bible which defined uh, all these elements what was the kingdom what was their economy what were they trading what were they exporting what was the social structure hierarchy caste hierarchy uh, you know everything else was defined in this so it became a, a, a reference point for anything we do uh, from there on uh, and then now uh, what are the kind of uh, vehicles they had what are the everything everything was defined this and then uh, also what were the back stories of these characters uh, so there through a series of interviews if it was shivagami what was she like in her childhood why what why was she the what is uh, the way she was right now so everything was uh, uh, evolved through a series of interviews and defined so none of it is actually in the films but it formed the uh, the bible and the reference for any of the work that we did going forward so we yeah like i said we define most of the things and we it's almost like documenting a fictionalized uh, a, a kingdom in in real life like a kingdom like it really existed so some of the concept set sketches here uh, so this is one of the initial sketches for uh, prabhas with uh, bahubali the uh, the crown the body armor and uh, and the, his uh, attire and uh, like this we did for almost every character the big small i mean uh, hundreds of characters um and you can see the, how it correlates to the actual film also you, uh, and this is the original sketches for the mahishmati uh, the palace um and uh, these are all pencil art these are the like the uh, the plans the scale uh, how, uh, what would be the you know the spaces like um so and i'm just giving reference examples of one one from each but this is uh, i mean we have a multiple done for almost every kind of space so this is like a, a block this thing for uh, uh, like a street or a, and this is like the catapults that we used uh, the uh, arm uh, the weapons uh, so the uh, so how they the physics of it what would be how it would work everything was uh, designed ahead of the thing so all this help us in going to the next step of actually uh, creating it physically uh, designing it and then creating it and then of course uh, the environment to set the story so once we had uh, sketches and thing now it was about uh, setting the tone of the film and the uh, ambient and the color palette and the textures and everything else uh, to actually get into the world so these were like the palace from then to now and then uh, then uh, uh, yeah this is called key art so that's like uh, the mahishmati central court uh, courtyard and then the actual kingdom so th these are all to give inspiration to the uh, the cinematographer the vfx teams and everybody else who is working on what the director is expecting to the look and feel what the scale and everything else so that's the statue lifting scene uh, one of the pieces from there so so this is uh, the key why katapa kel bahubali so this was the original uh, artwork for that uh, so yeah so the, after the artwork then there is a storyboarding for some of the scenes and previous for some of the scenes uh, so in uh, storyboarding and many of the scenes were storyboarded and i'll just show you one small storyboard uh, you'll probably understand where this is from if you've seen bahubali this is the human uh, from the palm trees Uh, when they fall and then land and how they open up so that was uh, that uh, that was uh, one of the things 
And then, uh, so in previous, there are different levels of previous that we have done. Uh, some are very basic previous, but what I'm going to show you is from the actual uh, done in a game engine. Uh, and uh, uh, this was for the war sequence uh, for the second part. And uh, this was done for the entire, I'm just going to show one small bit, but this was done for the entire 15, 20 minutes of it. Sorry. Yeah, it's a video. Yeah. You can play it for me. So the entire, actually the entire war sequence from beginning to end was, uh, was done like this. Uh, and uh, so the, what it gives us is the complete, as you can see, it gives us the complete, uh, everything to plan the shoot for the director is already, uh, he's completely clear what he wants to do, which shots, and then how we break it down, how much of it will go into CG, which will actually, we'll build a real set. Uh, and then uh, where the actors are actually needed uh and how very good so it's a, it helps us completely break down and really uh distribute the work to everybody in all the departments and everybody is clear this is what we're going to execute uh, so that was uh that's that's the greatness about uh previous uh, can you just move to the next slide So because of this previous, we were able to save a lot of time and a lot of money and resources. And uh, we were able to uh, ahead itself allocate to different studios, visual effects studios, which work will go to which studio, what kind of work is needed. And if it is just set extension, this will go to one studio. If it's, um, you know, modeling, it will go to some other studio. If it is uh, the animatics, then some other studio. So it's like the crucial components went to really the more experienced studios and then the rest of the stuff were outsourced to other studios. So those are all the so in in production like you know it's like uh, we had we had to make uh, both 3d models and uh, miniature models and sets and then there is uh, when you're figuring out the 3d models especially in uh, both in physically and in computer and inside the visual effects in cg uh, getting the proportion and the scale uh, is very very important and very crucial and it's very that's one of the most challenging things to get scale especially on a project like bahubali how do you show scale in a uh, in a 2d uh, screen uh, right so uh, so how you scale it how you proportion different elements of the uh, cg play around it that's one of the things and of course texture and color then uh, then the physical and digital sets that we'll create from there and then the film and part of it so uh, this this is a uh, this is the 3D model I'll play of the uh, that was created in CG that was used for the film. Can you play it from there? So this will give you an idea of the scale of the. So if if you if you know the film, this is from the Mahishmati Kingdom, from where the statue is. So a part of it were created in 3D, and a part of it were created in. Uh, physically. Yeah, that's, can you play it once more? It, I think it jerked. Yeah, it 
it's it's jumping but yeah you get the idea that the whole kingdom was uh, built in 3d and then a, you we could use elements of it which are elements and uh, we needed and whatever elements and this was then colored and textured this is the black and white render of the sorry you can go to the next So in terms of uh, filming was uh, between, uh, yeah, uh, we filmed for uh, 280 days in for the first part and 220 days in the second part between 2013, 15 and 15, 16. Uh, that's actual uh, principal photography. And uh, I'm just jumping to just the visual effects side. Sorry. Next one is, uh, what is the name? Uh, yeah. This will give a breakdown of uh... So that gives a fair idea of what I was talking about till now. And then uh, in post, of course, everything comes together. And uh, again, the, uh, I'm not going to talk about the rest, but the VFX part of it, I'm just going to show you a couple of scenes that were broken down and how they came into place. It's just, uh, uh, so this is the, uh, the, uh, the king set, the, uh, the Raj Darbar. Uh, so if you see the, so this was the, this is the actual shot. And this was what you see was what was actually built. And then everything else is set extension. And then uh, the 3D uh, assets that were populated and then fire. And then merge the shot with this, composite it, and then, yeah, yeah, extend it. So that's, uh, uh, so that's the, those are all the elements that go into the VFX and how we bring them all together. This is the waterfall. Uh, sequence i think it is getting uh, yeah just keep pressing it and just drag it a little so uh, all the waterfall and ent entirely water is simulated actually we got footages of waterfalls from different waterfalls around the world um, including niagara falls and then it's simulated com computer simulated the and the rocks and all are created modeled and then this is what was actually shot. The, just the jump was actually shot on green screen and then uh, composited onto the, onto the shot. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So, so that's how we have done it till now. And that's what most of the visual effects are being done. Basically it's a very uh, tr a traditional process. Artists work on it and then uh, you define what you want to do it and then they start creating 3D models. It's either in Maya or uh, 3D Max, and then build the assets, build the set extension, and build the animatics, and then bring it all together. Um, but going forward, uh, there's a lot of lot of things that are changing, and I think uh, two things that are changing: uh, uh, the uh, the visual, especially the visual effects in post production, uh, is the game engine. Uh, which is uh, which I showed you. We we used it earlier, but it's they're getting more and more powerful, and uh, especially Unreal and Unity, and the amount of stuff that you can do is uh, is uh, amazing now. And especially real world environments are you can get it to almost photoreal quality, uh, uh, photoreal quality, and very quickly. So how can we use the? Uh, um, yeah, this is. So, uh, so some of the ways, uh, one is world building, where you can use an Unreal Engine and then, uh, or a, a Unity a game engine to build the world that I showed you that we, uh, in the beginning, I showed you the whole of Maishmati that was built in, that was a conventionally way of building it. But now at much faster in real time, you can build these assets in, uh, in 3D, uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in Unreal or uh, Unity. And then once we build it, uh, you can do a real-time previous. Like what I mean by real-time previous is uh, what the previous I showed you earlier, uh, it, is, uh, it was done and recorded and you had to do with it. But what if I want to see it from a different angle? The director wants to uh, visualize it from another perspective uh, or change something. 
uh, and Unreal uh, now with us uh, gives you the power to the director to change the camera angles, move it differently, change the artist, change the action in real time, and then see how it is playing out, and then uh, and get different options before actually going for the shoot. So there's a lot more flexibility in that. And then another big thing that is uh, that is being proposed, and I think will be very soon, is uh, like what we did. We did the like if I showed you the visual uh, the in the three, uh, previous that we did. Uh, we did the entire thing, those assets and all, we built it, but that was only used for the previous and then it was chucked. I mean, there's no other use to it. But uh, going forward, the idea is that you, whatever you created there, all the effort that is put in, that you don't uh, waste it, but continue that and bring it into the post, uh, into the film, actually. So it becomes a linear uh, progression from uh, 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 less quality asset to a higher quality asset, but you don't throw away the asset. Uh, but uh, earlier we just threw it away. We just made it, used it for whatever it is, and it was of no other purpose. Uh, so that's a, that's a, that saves a lot of time and uh, effort in that. Then uh, the other big thing that's happening is uh, digital humans, meta humans in Unreal, uh, which is uh, changing the way you design humans uh, and actors, uh, actors. And uh, th there's a lot of uh, work going on. And photorealistic humans is still a way off, but uh, it's getting there. I think if some of you have seen. Uh, Love, Death, and Roberts and Netflix uh, series. Uh, they use some of the meta humans, which are completely CG generated and almost real life. Uh, so that's uh, this thing. And then, of course, uh, virtual sets and virtual production. So uh, the ability to create everything in uh, virtually, the entire set can be created virtually, and uh, you shoot uh, with the virtual set in the background on an LED screen. And uh, you can so you get to see it's a. Uh, the advantages are uh, you get to see the final product now. You don't have to wait in the post after the after everything after a few months. Then realize that I made this mistake, or I wanted it differently, or something else. Uh, but you can see it in in real time in uh, now that because the asset is already built, and then you're shooting against the asset, so you know how the art like how the artists are behaving uh, uh, with the environment, interacting with the environment, etc because earlier we uh, now we are shooting against a green screen and so the artist has to understand that there is something else happening and then emote that so let's assume it's an ega the fly and uh, sudeep had to is, uh, imagine a fly coming in and then act to that so it's uh, it's a very uh, you know very difficult and he had to be a really good actor but now you can put that in in the on the screen and then he can act to that so, uh, so those are uh, uh, the advantages. Then, of course, the reflection. When you do a green screen shoot, there is always a, a green reflection on the on the asset that you are using, right? Uh, but when you have a real image, then you have the real reflection. So, so those are all the advantages of uh, virtual production, and I think it's going to take off in a big way very soon. And Unreal is uh, the engine which is driving the entire virtual production scenario. Uh, of course, world building is just an example of some worlds that you can build. Then the, uh, the other big uh, pushes coming from artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. Uh, so if you have been following, uh, many of you might be knowing, uh, Mid Journey, Dal Dali, and Stable Diffusion are uh, defining AI-based concept art, uh, art, not concept art, but basically it's an art. And uh, you just give a prompt, uh, whatever prompt you feel like, and it will generate four different options and then you give one more and another four different options and then you start understanding it and then you very soon develop concept art uh, what we need uh, it basically i'm not saying it will eliminate the artist but it gives the artist that much more leeway uh, to st as a starting ground where you have to start from scratch when bahubali when you have to start a sketch and then an environment and everything or oh, manually everybody had to imagine and then put something good bring reference images together and work on it now you can cut short the time by just generating in using ai to and artists to generate uh, hundreds of artists and concept arts and then uh, figuring out where you want to be within minutes uh, and uh, similar very soon it's from 2d they're expecting it to come even to 3d uh, generating 3d characters using uh, ai ai generated this thing then of course uh, world building um, uh, there's uh, i'll give an example of uh, Prom uh, promethean ai uh, which uses, uh, it's completely, uh, again, uh, prompt based. And you say, I want a 80s teenager's room. And it understands that in 80s, this is what were the elements that is there. And this is how th these were the props that used to be there and build a whole room for you within minutes. 
uh, how how the room will be so uh, you know all the pre production is going to uh, you know take a lot of work out of uh, pre production the and uh, scale, uh, make it faster and then of course there's a lot of work going on in uh, optimizing cg pipeline using ai so there's a lot of manual work within the cg like roto work when you do uh, like a shoot against green skin somebody has to remove cut and paste and then put it against it and that's a lot of manual work uh, it's not creative but manual work and using ai and machine learning very soon uh, a lot of these uh, steps uh, which are time consuming and manual based will uh, can be eliminated and then automated and uh, completely process driven so that you just work on the creative parts of it uh, and of course deep fake is another uh, technology that's uh, creating humans out of a drive from uh, one human is driving and another human and recreating another human exactly like uh, existed um, and that will have a, lo a lot of implications uh, so these are some of the ai based i mean just touching broadly there's a lot of work happening but i'm just wanted to some of the interesting elements of it i'll give some so this is a concept art from mid journey that was i just took up the this thing probably generated in few minutes uh this is these are the faces that were uh, developed in uh that mid journey did uh so depending on the prompts you give and then what else it learns and then so the, uh, this was the promethean ai i was telling how uh, you can build the stranger things entire environment in 15 minutes um so i'll just run you through the first few minutes just a couple of minutes just to give you an idea of what i'm talking about Hey friends, Andrew here from Promethean AI. And first of all, allow me to extend a very big thank you to all of you on behalf of our entire team for the amazing response that we've gotten to our keynote that came out earlier last month. In a few short weeks, thousands of you have tried our tools and have given us amazing feedback that we are taking into account as we're continuing to deliver new features and new content for all of you. And if it is your first time joining us, Promethean AI is the artist interface for interacting with virtual worlds. With absolute minimal UI and no nodes, scripting, or code to learn, instead, we choose to make your creative process as easy as words. Now, the full Promethean AI suite consists of a number of tools, like our state-of-the-art AI-powered content management platform, or our shared spaces for... So basically, you get the idea. It's a completely AI-driven, and then you can change whatever you want. And uh, we'll just play... This is a deep fake video. Many of you might have seen it again. It's a... Uh... Tom Cruise, uh, that artist imitating Tom Cruise, how they recreated it. Just, uh, we'll just play a few minutes. What's up, TikTok? All year long, Deep Tom Cruise has been posting videos showing what appears to be a different side of the Oscar nominated actor. I think there's bubblegum inside there. People are surprised that I'm a big Dave Matthews guy. But believe it or not, that's most definitely not Tom Cruise. Nor is this with me in our L.A. bureau. This is serious breaking news, but a little behind the scenes, a little a little flavor. I'm with one of the most legitimate correspondents on Earth. Now, if you're interviewing me, Jacob, yeah. you face it. Hold on just a second. There's a big fire. <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> you are deep fake Tom Cruise. That's me. <laughs> That's me. Miles Fisher may have an uncanny resemblance to the superstar, but using advanced technology, what he's created is far more than an extraordinary impersonation. Have you guys created the best deep fake that has ever been made? I think we have created the first deep fake that's so realistic that a large majority of people have seen. Not only seen, but fooled by, including at least one of the world's biggest celebrities. This is the one that Justin Bieber thought was real. Fisher says looking and sounding like the leading man made it difficult to chart his own path as an actor. So a year ago, he decided to lean into it, stumbling into a role with repercussions far beyond Hollywood. As I find myself the unofficial face of this deepfake movement, it's important to learn. And I'm fascinated by this. This is the bleeding edge of technology. Yeah, so this is a lot that there's a lot of work happening on this. And, What's uh, up, TikTok? 
So there's a lot of implications for it. Like if you actually Tom Cruise were to license it, uh, license his face, then there are now actually a lot of people artists actually licensing uh, their thing. So there's players who are playing, but at the same time, their deep fake, uh, their artificial driven face and body is doing the ads. So, uh, so there are two things happening simultaneously. They're not. They don't have to uh, actually uh, take a break from their career or games while they're doing uh, where their other digital stuff is doing the other things. So uh, the same thing for uh, films where you can use them in multiple places and uh, just changes the whole game. Or you can use Prabha or de-aging is another big thing where you can de-age characters, artists uh, to look what they were uh, when they were looking younger or uh, at a specific age. And uh, all this is uh, dri uh, being driven through AI. So that's a lot of work happening in that space. So then, uh, and then, So we, so we believe there's a lot in the world of Bahubali and uh, we are both my our company and Rajmuli are, what's that? <laughs> so we believe uh, there's a lot in the world of Bahubali and we are actually, we plan to do a lot of stuff around the world of Bahubali and we plan to use a lot of the technology that's being developed uh, to enhance and uh, optimize the production and to make it easier. Uh, so yeah, that's the basic, I uh, just wanted to give you an overview and uh, I can take some questions and uh... yeah in Baubali uh, so Baubali they were especially the first part there were multiple challenges uh, both on the creative and, uh, of course, in the creative is about getting the VFX right. Uh, uh, because, especially because we had a constraint on the money, uh, on the financial constraint. So how do we get the uh, right qu the quality uh, at the right price that we could uh, think and we couldn't make it, we had to get to a certain quality at a certain price. So I think uh, that was the biggest challenge uh, as far as the creative a creative process uh, and of course the financial challenges and all that I said yeah <laughs> yes 
Yeah. You said that you outsource. Uh, you outsource some of the work to experienced uh, right. designers and some of the work to not so experienced designers. Right. What do you look at when you are choosing uh, people for your work? No, it's not people. Uh, it's more the studios. Yeah. What do you? Uh, look yeah. At? So it's basically the experience that they ha earlier had earlier. What kind of like if you're looking for a certain kind of animation that we want to do, uh, had had those studios done that kind of work before, and uh, and more importantly, are the artists who did that are they still in that studio? Uh, <laughs> because uh, the studio could have done it, but if the artist left, there's no point. Uh, uh, so it's a lot of uh, groundwork to understand uh, which studios are they uh, are uh, capable of doing certain quality of work. And uh, we have our animation uh, v VFX supervisors uh, who are like been in the field on Bobbly one and two. They've been in this in industry for the last 15, 20, 20, maybe 20 years. So they kind of have a very good understanding that if this is the work that we're looking for, then probably we'll have to go outside, go or go, uh, or we can do it in India. Or if you go outside, probably these are the companies that we can look at outside and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Just focusing on the future right. of what we wanted to have in terms of, uh, see, uh, we have a great ecosystem in terms of the availability of artists and then right. other, a lot of experience in making, telling stories. Right. But there are also gaps, right? right? And so, right. for example, we want to have a self-serving uh, and and complete ecosystem, right? Say in Hyderabad, right. uh, you know, what would what else is the miss, what else are the missing pieces that we'd like to bring in here? No, um, so it's a very broad uh, question, but there is uh, there's basically the ecosystem from what I've noticed uh in when i've been to la and all that as la has a very vibrant ecosystem so there are uh, amazing uh, pre visualization studios studios that just specialize in previous there is a lot of academia uh, some of the best film schools some of the best liberal arts schools uh and some of the best artists uh so uh, there is it's 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 something that has evolved over the last 100 years uh, right, right. It is something, uh, it's, it was a natural progression that everybody got there because of great weather and the studios came there and then the academia was there and then the technology companies came there and then of course the likes of George Lucas, uh, who gave birth to visual effects and everything else. So that, that was a hundred year journey that happened. So I think uh, for us also to in Hyderabad, we have certain elements, we have good academia, we have good uh, studios. We have great weather, <laughs> but I think it's something that somebody has to uh, put a lot more focus on uh, and somebody has to drive it uh, to, uh, especially I think there needs to be a lot more support from the government uh, that they need to have that uh, vision that we want to create, a, like how they are driving a, a, a entrepreneur startup and ecosystem. I think we need to look at uh, starting an ecosystem for creative people and how do we bring different elements together by hook up who to create that jumpstart that ecosystem so there's a i don't know if i'm answering the uh, but yeah there are a lot of elements we have some elements but some are difficult to bring unless there is a, 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 a some proactive involvement from a larger set of people yeah <laughs> so following up on that or similar right. to that you know when uh, Rhythm and Hughes came here. Right. They came here. Somebody came here and gave a talk about the Narnia movie soon after it was made, right. about 15 years ago or something, whenever. Right. So they, you know, and, and I got to talk to the Rhythm and Hughes people. They were saying they set up their shop in Hyderabad and Bombay. Right. And when they came, their idea was, you know, India is full of engineers. They lose the graphics engineers on the special effects people. I mean, the 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 creative engineering side of it. Right. And uh, that was their hope. Oh, right. And they said they couldn't hire one person in, in that, right. but they got lots of artists, artists. you know, so, so they went into, the, that was not their plan. They did all the, right. the art, artwork in Bombay, of course, uh, people are there and right. they were doing the Hyderabad also. And there was, there, there's no, you know, there's no talent that is the higher end, how to design the VFX, not right. operate right. and do the programming or do the right. you know, coding. And so how do we, you know, how do we create such people? That's, that's what Triple IT can do for us. <laughs> Rather than so, because it's not, I, they, we cannot create artists easily. Right. So one is as artists, they need to have inherent talent and then you give the tools to 
uh, to uh, educate them and no, the make tool building is and they, they you know they all build specialized tools, tools. for special thing that is what they were looking for yeah. they thought you know india is good at engineering we'll get that <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, so all these companies rhythm and hues and digital domain and all of them they are so this thing because they have invested in like you said specialized tools which can do optimize the work and which are not uh, freely available that you can't just buy off the shelf and use them uh, so those tools are what they that gives them that core uh, strength and uh, this thing um, but uh, to build it at uh, to for uh, and that has to come because it's a uh, you see the problem and then you build the tool and then you keep the tool with you it is it is not like i uh, i can go ahead and build a tool without knowing what the uh, problem is i'm doing some cg work and then i realize if i build this tool it will make it faster so i built a tool which will uh, do uh, do this thing so uh, but on the creative side i think th there is a need uh, definitely to uh, build a talent pool of uh, creative artists who 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 can who, there are artists but giving them the right set of tools and exposing them to the right set of tools and uh, making them uh, 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 easy to uh, uh, making them accessible to tal uh, this thing industry i think that's a huge uh, this thing so what percentage of say bahubali 1 and 2 right. had to go out you couldn't get the kind of people or tools or creative expertise so in here. terms of in terms of actual artwork uh, uh, most of it was done here except for a few uh, the actual artwork concept work concept art uh, uh, that i've shown that we have worked uh, uh, everything was done here almost 95% maybe a few key art was out from outside um, but in terms of uh, uh, the actual execution of vfx uh, like what I showed you, the the previous shot of the thing, uh, that that is a very complex shot, uh, and that was done outside in UK, I think. Uh, so they, uh, probably about five six companies uh, outside worked, um, and uh, one was not just the availability. The other thing is, uh, we have to finish it in like six months or one year and uh, we have only so many studios and so many things that it's not about the talent all the talent is occupied with either a, a bahubali a big project like bahubali or some other work that's already there and there's no more room so there is a, you're you're forced to look outside and because this happen in uh, phases right suddenly there's a peak load and then it'll taper off and then everybody's empty so it's not less. so so but what i think about 20 25 percent of the critical work went outside yeah, so I'll touch upon a bit on speech. Yeah. Okay, so given that the most of the content these days, even the movies made in Telugu, we release in multiple movies. Right. In the lab, we are recently working on a real, maybe realistic voice cloning. Right. And that's a multilingual one. Right. So let's say you clone Prabhas in Telugu, and right. now you make him speak English also as realistic as possible. That's a effort ongoing. Right. How much uh, potential, how much was the challenge to convert the the content into multiple languages and such a tools, uh, how much uh, you see will be useful. Uh, so there is uh, definitely there's a lot of use for that. In this case, we like we, we know that we release the film in at least four or five languages, primarily the Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, uh, Hindi and uh, Hindi. Uh, and uh, in all these cases, we had to take specific care. So one is we have to rewrite the dialogues. When we write the dialogues, uh, it was shot in Telugu and Tamil. First part was shot in Telugu and Tamil. So that, meaning the artist had said the dialogue in Telugu and in Tamil, the close shot. So the lip sync was there for Telugu and Tamil. But when you go to Hindi or Malayalam, uh, we had to write a dialogue and keeping in mind a word that will match to the lip. So the, the writer had to be conscious of, he couldn't say any word that he wanted. He had to, within the, I mean, as close as possible to the lip, you can't obviously get. So, uh, so that if in AI or in machine learning and then thing, it's if the the language can that and then we had to get uh, Sharad Kelkar in Hindi to dub for Prabhas, somebody else to dub for uh, Prana and everybody else different because they don't speak the language. Uh, so if there is one is about Prabhas's voice itself driving the other, the tonality without using somebody else, and two where we can get the lip to get closer, uh, more more in sync. I think both will help the other side. One of the biggest uh, advantage, uh, things that Bahubali was successful in Hindi was because we took a lot of care in making sure that the dialogues when they were said in Hindi sounded as authentic as possible and as real as it didn't look like a dubbed film. 
uh, and everybody thought it was an original film. And that can be done through some of the processes. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I have a doubt here. Yeah. Yep. Oh. So yeah, we've talked about the futures of technology, VFX and all. Right. What does it bring to the artists? Because like most of the work is now being done by VFX with the auto generators and stuff. Like I said, uh, see, artists cannot be eliminated. And artists, I feel, see, artists is still needed. But instead of doing one piece of concept work in, like, say, one week or two weeks, he'll be able to generate multiple options in much lesser time. Uh, and you still need that, uh, you know, getting to the stage where the C, uh, AI completely generates art on its own, uh, which I want, which I mean, I can generate an art, which I can put it up on a wall, which is right now I, I, I can do it, which I can do a beautiful art. But if I want a, a specific concept art, like the way I want to build Bhagavati, Mahishmati Kingdom, it'll take a few iterations and, and an artist has to still work on it before and after, feed the, feed the original one and then get derivatives of it, but it will fasten the speed of work. Yeah. But like, for example, right. like recently, one of the technologies used has generated an entire graphic novel, right. like very few hours. Right. And it's better than a lot of other movies or any VFX. Right. So there is very little scope for the artists at this point. Not necessarily. It is, it is, see, it is like, uh, if I just say, there's a computer plays chess. Right, but but still, you you play against the computer or you play with the computer, uh, but there is not that the regular chess play is eliminated. Right, so uh, it's a little off example, but basically there is. I would never say that the artist is uh, human touch is always human touch. It'll never. Uh, it can replicate. There'll be alternatives. There may be a graphic driven, uh, uh, the AI driven graphic novel, but the artist has to push himself harder to get a novel which is uh, better. But he, there will be always be a scope for an artist. That's my. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yeah. Here. Um, so currently, while doing this uh, VFX and all, we are using this green mat thing. Right. right. So. Again, there is a word here in the future, like there come, there'll be an, uh, there, there might be a chance of coming this uh, virtual uh, productions. Right. So is there a chance that there could be a reduction in the green mat uh, VFX and how far will it be cost effective? Yeah. So right now, as we speak, a uh, green mat is not needed if you're doing a virtual production. Uh, with an LED screen, but as of now, it's not applicable in all cases. But um, many of the cases, you can you do it. Uh, cost to cost, right now, as you speak, it is still uh, we, uh, green mat is still cheaper, uh, but more time consuming. It'll take a longer time. So if you value the time and time to get it ready and everything else, uh, then they may be more or less the same. But going forward, as the computing power increases and everything else comes down. I think virtual production will be far cheaper and faster. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, one question. Yeah. So uh, I have a question. So in um, as movies become a lot of special effects, the the backgrounds, the props. Um, do you think that there would come a day when viewers, mm -hmm. film goers, would actually make that distinction and say, "Oh, this is all special effects. It's not like Ben Hur." Mm -hmm. and I'm just taking the example of Ben Hur. Mm -hmm. um, would that be an issue because everybody now recognizes most of it is even even from crowd generation to background? Right. No, I think it's the other way around. It's I think more and more it will become so seamless that you'll not know how it was done, except for the fact that you already know that it was not done in not by looking at it, but because you read somewhere or you know that it was not it was done com completely cg generated and it was not uh, manual i mean physical uh, but i think the key uh, thing is whether the emotion is working or not yes so if the yes. emotion works and the story is working i think everything else is just there to support it and nobody is going to worry uh, or bother or say this was cg generated that it was not manual it, that is i think if the if the drama works yeah. uh, then everything else is so yeah, so in that way, the props, the background, everything is not emotion, but it's the awe. It's the awe, and it enhances the supports the yes. thing. It is needed, but it is uh, but it is not the main thing. Yeah. It, like music, 
Yes. Right. Music is needed, but it's not the main thing. I mean, if the emotion is not working primarily, music can only lift it to that much more. Uh, yeah. It can't take it. It can't cover up for the entire yeah. well, bad acting or bad direction. Yeah. It can't cover up. So it's okay. only it can only prop it up a little more. Yes. But if it is great acting and a great uh, emotion happening, and then and you have the right music and the right set and the right uh, tone of the, and the right uh, lighting. it can just blow up so it's, yeah so uh, that was another question on lighting but i'll give it to the students <laughs> okay okay so yeah hi uh, yeah. yeah so like bahubali was made in the part one was made in 2015 so uh like the pre production should have started around 2013 or 2014 somewhere 2013, so yeah at what was the technology back then and mm-hmm. how did you believe if Rajmouli said, "Like one guy jumps off a cliff." And how did you imagine before going to the set? <laughs> so then, like I said, right, then uh, to now, like I said, there's a whole, whole shift in technology and how even when we're doing first part, there was no uh, game engine was not accessible to us. Uh, second part, the game engine came, and that's why we have a game engine previous in the in the second part. In the first part, it was much more raw, and in, in fact, the first war sequence, first part war sequence, was completely storyboarded. Yeah. we did it based on storyboarding um so and that's where these uh, these uh, artwork that i showed you which the color artwork the key art that we call it which showed which through which we could know what is it that he was imagining or through which cinematographers and everybody knew dop or everybody knew what uh, the or the uh, um, uh, production designer sabu siril knew what was it that the director had in mind so that's that was how it was it was uh, this thing Uh, but yeah but if you have to actually let's say jumping scene uh, we just had to hear his narration and just uh, each of us had a uh, a different thing but then it went on to when it went on to uh, being con- uh, conceptualized and artwork was drawn from there you know that this was but how do you execute it was again something that was a brainstorming session between the production designer vfx supervisor then the action choreographer because how do you jump from here to here the rope work that had to be done and whether that is uh the right one yeah that's all <laughs> i have another question which is not related to vfx okay uh, what do you what do you think is the relevance of cinema in society in general it, as a, for me it is about to entertain yeah <laughs> i'll be clear i think any social messaging and all that is secondary it's primarily to entertain <laughs> yeah hi so from the faculty here i am just wanted to know like uh, how you think the the at least the indian cinema is ready to take upon let's say virtual characters right so there are a lot of animatable movies uh, the characters that we used to use in hollywood movies and across the world now so for example if you have to make a uh, another bahubali with purely virtual avatars right, right, right. what kind of first of all if the society as a, in terms of consumers are ready for that and second part is from your side what kind of uh, is a business and as a community as a whole for right. producers and directors they are up for that kind of task right uh, so um, it's a very interesting question very the thing is in india till now uh, animation at, uh, has never worked uh, indian animation uh, for either because uh, it's a chicken and egg story because not, uh, it was a poor quality animation because the budgets were not there because budgets were not there because there, there was no box office for it so the producers were not willing to uh, think so generally animation has never worked in india animation in virtual this thing um, but going forward i uh, uh, feel there is an opportunity and uh, i think that is one of the ways in which we can uh, tell stories great stories especially from indian mythology and uh like uh, even fantasy worlds like bahubali um real life not necessarily but fantasy worlds uh, like bahubali there is a huge opportunity and that is one that we are personally uh, as a company and as with rajmouli we are closely uh working on um but it is uh, there are technology challenges and financial challenges to it in terms of uh, again making it viable and uh, and also getting it to a stage where people will accept it for what it is uh, uh, and believe in that world and go into that world and forget about it and watch the drama 
So that's the, again, coming back to that. So it, it is very close, but uh, uh, I think something will happen soon, but uh, maybe three, four years down the road. But it's a big opportunity. Maybe it will be also like on the line of metaverse and more immersive experience or it's just... No, like um, metaverse again, I am a little skeptical uh, how much of a, a use case scenarios we have for a meta metaverse. Um, uh, unless it's like a really immersive gaming or something like that. For entertainment, I'm, I don't know. Personally, I'm not so convinced. But as just as a film, to the, uh, to, uh, uh, like a, a theatrical film or on a... Uh, streaming streaming series uh, with animated character uh, animated and uh, characters can be lifelike and uh, environments can be lifelike so where it's almost difficult to tell the difference whether it is real or cg generated uh, so it can we can reach that state very soon thank you hi hi yeah. Uh, I have one question. I have two questions. First yeah. question is on this uh, photorealistic human side. Right. So for movies, uh, it usually happens that you take the main character for three D scanning. You mm -hmm. basically outsource to some light stage kind of technology, right. which other uh, VFX house has. Right. So given now in India, the movies are uh, like they have enormous budget, like two hundred crores or one fifty crores, and that technology can be developed with some one or two percent of that budget in house. Right. So what is the follow up on that? Like, is it happening or is it going to happen soon? Are we building some in house technology for that kind of? So uh, light stage, uh, yeah. It's not about uh, the cost of it. It's the technology behind it that the, and the recreating that. See, one is like you said, you have a light stage where you have cameras all around, and then you take a picture. Um, in, and uh, the character artist is giving different emotions. Uh, there's a set of emotions that he needs to do and the, he's photographed. And then you rebuild the, uh, uh, that, is, that is the easier part, setting it up is like a home project. But actually having the tools to rebuild the face uh, to, uh, and in, in, the, in, in all it's this thing and have it emote uh, is a challenge. So uh, unless you have the right tools and the right knowledge and the right technicians to do it, it, it you just can't do it. So, that, so it's more like a research uh, part or no, the engineering part. No, it's uh, it's uh, moved beyond research part. Now it's a, a lot of people are working on it in in the west, not in India, but in west in Hollywood. There are many studios like Digital Domain and uh, Unreal, and everybody else is working on this uh, human thing. But uh, it's it's still a little way off. And especially getting photorealistic humans is called uncanny valley. Yeah. Uh, so how do you, uh, you know, cross that is a, is a challenge. Okay. Thanks for the answer. And second question is, uh, so you outsource your different parts of the VFX to different studios. Right. So how do you make sure that they follow the same style and same consistency? For example, if you have one student oh. generating characters right. and others generating environment. So, right. so that is uh, the job of the VFX supervisor. And then there's a QA, a QA, uh, QA team. And uh, they're all followed through. Uh, so it's a it's a set of instructions that are given, and uh, and how the output is taken. So it's, uh, the the in house VF, uh, VFX team that you have takes care of that. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah. So I just want to know when you're presented with like such a big opportunity of investment, even in a big or like a new film. How do you decide? Like, do you see the director or the community, or do you go by the script? Or like, how uh, does your gut feeling work? Is in investing so, your time, our money? In? So, so it's one is definitely the script. Uh, uh, ideally, the script should be something that we like and some, that's something that we want to tell, that we want to be put our names behind it. And uh, second is the director. Uh, these are the two uh, two things, and then based on that we take. And then the third is whether all this is coming within a certain bu budget, depending on the cast and the, uh, what is the commercial element. Nowadays, what we're looking at is whether is, is it, uh, can it, it can be a great script, but will people come to theater for this? Uh, or will people want to watch it at home in the, in the, on Netflix or Amazon or something? So, uh, so we are having to uh, make that judgment as well. Yeah, so in many uh, of the shots which you showed uh, in the set, uh, on the set there are some physical aspects, physical models which are recreated and uh, 
there's a green screen where uh, cgi uh, computer generated images are created so what is the importance of the physical aspect of the recreations on the set and uh, do you see these physical things diminishing over time or will they always have a place in cinema so so what i've uh, understood is that anything there is a physical there is an interaction between the actor and the physical object like if i'm sit, i'm touching this podium this podium cannot be cg Uh, uh, right uh, so we need to have this podium as a physical set and everything else i can have a cg environment uh, so wherever there's a physical interaction between the object and the uh, and the artist that has to be a physical object so we create uh, as much as it's required where there is that uh, as need uh, wherever there's a that much to the physical extent uh, wherever there's the to the extent there is physical interaction we, cre- we create that part in physic in uh, physically and the rest is digital it can be a dummy also but uh, typically like these we create in in uh, in full uh, uh, and then yeah okay oh, thank you sir uh he- yeah sir okay uh, so uh, again uh, so bahubali uh, made our expectations much higher no. and bahubali 2 uh, you know succeeded yeah. in satisfying our whatever you know the curiosity on why katappa <laughs> killed all that so i have uh, one question about uh, we we used words like recreation right? so suppose we have to recreate maya bazaar today mm-hmm. so do you think the expectations will be met because you to you as in today's technology there's lots of advantages than what was 60 years back right right do right. you think it will meet the expectations or uh, the advantage or it's a disadvantage so uh, so i i'm just to understand you're saying if i have to recreate exactly as it is the same not exactly suppose uh, we, uh, we hypothetical situation uh, somebody or rajmouli th- thinks of recreating maya bazaar today right no i so, think more so. from more than the technology perspective and the vfx perspective i think whether when you rewrite the script and the script is rewritten and and you look at it from today's lens will it still be exciting for today's audience or will the songs no longer be of interest maybe the songs might not be of interest today i'm talking about the illusion and all Ill- those parts illusions today see th- those days they did amazing they had to really put their brain behind it to get that uh, those, those kind of visual effects that they did uh, today it's much easier and simpler to do those so it won't be so uh, ama- uh, we won't be stunned by those visual effects if you have to do that's why i said if you have to do the same visual effects i don't think it will be uh, the audience will be taken in by that we have to do something completely at a different scale to uh, excite the audience now So we, <laughs> we keep hearing there will be a mahabharat coming from the same house so we look forward to that little fingers crossed <laughs> uh, yeah uh yeah. hello hi. yeah uh, so uh, seeing you talk about all this uh, all these things in so much detail uh, i only know you as a producer of bahubali yeah. uh where did your passion for you know cinema and all this ignite because to put you know this kind of time effort and money into you know this magnitude of a project right how did you get into all this because when i saw your wikipedia <laughs> <laughs> so uh i always say i i'm an engineer actually uh, i'm a civil engineer from andhra university and then i did my masters in anm uh i always wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, and uh, do something on my own and that's when i came back to india after working for two years and then started something and by because of a necessity i landed in films because of two failures two businesses that i started failed and uh, i think then then somehow uh, an opportunity was presented in television serials so out of necessity not because of passion i entered <laughs> television uh, and then from then on we uh, we uh, found the interest and we started going from there <laughs> Oh, that's very it's a very, very very lame but uh, yeah <laughs> very reassuring to all of us <laughs> uh yeah good good afternoon sir uh here yeah so uh, i wanted to ask uh, i wanted to like ask you about uh, you mentioned how the interaction with humans and uh, other objects are usually done in uh, are usually created right 
right. they're not uh, they're not uh, animated right so right. so what happens if you have uh, something like animals right? right because i don't think you can bring an animal to the set and coax it to stay for that long right so, so animals completely t- nowadays if you see rrr uh, all the animals in rrr are completely cg generated there's no real animal or or the elephants in bahubali uh they completely um, we had an elephant real elephant but mostly everything is uh, cg generated so so how are the interactions like uh, say they're so, riding so a- you have a, a green screen uh, person or a thing that is uh, working in the space in the in 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 the place of the animal and then you replace it but it takes a lot more uh, effort all right yeah. thank you Of course yeah my pleasure <laughs> yeah uh yeah i have a question yeah. like uh, since the actors especially they are supposed to you know express uh, how they feel according to the scene but since it's mostly vfx do they really you know get the feel or the gist of what exactly is happening because there's just green screen and a few physical objects present so like they yeah they need to really get into the character and uh, it also a lot depends on the opposite character who's if there are two characters playing both have to support each other so uh, so uh, yeah but a lot uh, they need to really work on the on the thing also are there cases as if uh, the actors have presented their like scene but later it's like uh, the scene the background the environment is supposed to get changed like you know the artist uh, like the director thought that something else would be a bit different so like the whole of the process from the graphic novels to the sketches whatever has been done it gets changed and then how much time does it take it's like uh, so it won't happen for the entire thing but there will be a certain scenes or certain shots where uh, you do, uh, the director won't like the, what was what came up in the background and we'll have to rework on it uh so there is that's that's why i'm saying in the future when you have unreal pipeline and real time pipeline it's much more easy to play with and change change objects and director knows up front what he's getting whereas uh, you're waiting till the very end to get um but yeah there are there are situations where that happens especially when directors are not very uh, uh used to cg working in cg environments it does happen thank you so i know there are lot more questions we have a lot of questions uh, many of us have not gone to watch to sets to watch these kind of bigger movies the few we have watched the shooting become so boring we wonder why we even go to see the movies <laughs> yeah um so uh, so has given us a chance so any of next time they have another one of those sure. major mega series hits <laughs> when they're doing the movies and they're actually taking the shots we'll take a rain check yeah, and sure. uh, go and see uh, because maybe that will give us both as engineers and also scientists or artists a better idea thanks a lot thank you uh, thank Mr. you shobhu thanks thank a you. lot for the <laughs> outside also and uh, on behalf of triple it request yes. thank you thank you i used to hear uh, you know somebody told me in 60s and 70s in uh, in the coastal andhra there will be you know farmers who had a very good year got a lot of money they take all their money go to madras make a movie and of course lose all the money <laughs> this is the story so i was imagining here one agriculture engineer <laughs> starting to make movie in the same way but looks like he failed his businesses and then started making movies anyway it's very great, good to hear about all these things uh, and and i hope our students are get some idea about this and see how difficult it is you know even if you go to the modern sets i think it's so repetitive the, the, every day things may be very boring <laughs> that's the problem with all these yeah, so, yeah we'll okay thank a, you go for a whole year and watch we yeah. learn a lot and uh, actually movies are one place where you can fail one movie but you can always come back sometimes you can't do that in uh, companies so uh, thanks a lot and on behalf of uh, triple id and all the students we thank mr shobhu again there's tea outside you can talk to him maybe for another 10 minutes at this time thank you